Congress is on summer recess until September 8th, but while they've been away, there has been no shortage of big news stories, both at home and abroad. Just this hour, we learned that President Obama wants a review of federal programs that allow police departments to purchase surplus military hardware, like we saw on the ground in Ferguson, these Ferguson the last few weeks. Let's talk about that and other issues in news with Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff from California. So, Congressman Schiff, you know, the president spoke earlier in the week about raising questions about this military equipment here. But, but, I, but I have to ask, you know, this goes back years, goes back to 9-11, in many ways predates 9-11. You know, do you think there should be a review now? And, and why do you think anyone thought at any point that, that police on the street would need armored personnel carriers and all the kind of equipment we saw on the street in Ferguson uh, these last couple of weeks? Well, I think the review is uh, very, very much called for, and I'm glad the president is undertaking it. Uh, look, a lot of the material provided under these uh, programs is pretty non-controversial. It's things like bulletproof vests and helmets, uh, even helicopters, which police routinely use. Uh, but you're right, uh, there are other equipment that have been uh, acquired under this program, large mine-resistant vehicles, where it's very hard to justify. I mean, there may be a district or two uh, along the border that's heavily involved in uh, drug violence where they can justify something like this, but in most of the country, it's very hard to see how that would be useful. Uh, and it can also be very costly to own and, uh, and dangerous to utilize without adequate training. So I'm glad the president is undertaking this review. Those images uh, certainly give a police force the impression of being there, uh, standing against the community, not with it. Uh, and that alone, I think, merits investigation. Sure, and might, sometimes it seemed made, made the protest worse rather than better. At least that was the argument of some critics. I, I want to turn now to, to ISIS, if we can. Uh, is it your view that the U.S., that the administration has a strategy to block the advance, or in fact push back the advance of ISIS in Iraq and Syria, or are you seeing more a reactive policy here? Because remember, it was just a few weeks ago, there, there were no military strikes in Iraq. Now there are military strikes in Iraq uh, and consideration of military strikes in Syria. Well, I think there's a strategy that's emerging. It's not static because uh, ISIS hasn't been static. Uh, but I think right now what the administration is really pushing for is to contain ISIS in Iraq by providing military equipment, training, intelligence, uh, aerial support, uh, as well as forming an international coalition to put pressure on I ISIS in Syria. Turkey to close their border, border to these foreign jihadis, to get the Qataris and the Kuwaitis and the Saudis to dry up external funding, uh, to get uh, our European partners to provide more in terms of uh, humanitarian support and military support, for example, for the Kurds. So I think there is a strategy, uh, but, but as I say, as the threat is evolving, that strategy has to evolve with it. Well, you're on the House Intelligence Committee, a senior member. Uh, you've been getting briefings on the, the, the threat from ISIS. I've been hearing from intel officials for months about the threat, not just to the region, but also to, to Europe and to the American homeland because of the possibility of returning foreign fighters there. I mean, that threat's been out there for months. It's, it's not new. Is it your view that the U.S. underestimated the rise of ISIS and, and waited too late uh, in reacting only in recent weeks rather than months ago? I think the rapid spread of ISIS did take us by surprise. Uh, certainly we knew that uh, ISIS was growing in power, uh, but the fact that the Iraqi military would melt away the way it did and that ISIS would uh, be able to co-opt the tribes as quickly as it did, I think was somewhat of a surprise. Uh, and, uh, and we're going to have to deal with it. Uh, it means that uh, we're going to have to put far greater military pressure on ISIS uh, and devote a lot more of our time in the years to come uh, into trying to keep our eye on these foreign fighters who are in the fight now and will come back to Europe, will try to come back to the United States uh, and pose a real threat to our homeland. Uh, so, yes, I think some of the speed with which it took over uh, surprised us. The fact that it was a growing menace we knew. Uh, but uh, uh, some of these things, like the degree to which the Iraqi military melted away, uh, I think were beyond our, our capability to foresee. Russian cargo trucks apparently have returned to Russia after entering eastern Ukraine without the government's permission. That is according to international observers in Ukraine. The trucks supposedly brought humanitarian aid to eastern Ukraine, where an estimated 2,000 people have died in the fighting since April. Ukraine, however, complained that some of the trucks actually brought weapons to pro-Russian rebels battling 
the Ukrainian government for dominance in the region. We have Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California, who's ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee, uh, back with us now. C Congressman Schiff, this is a game of count and mouse that's gone on for weeks now, months in fact. You've got caught convoys, whether they're carrying aid or weapons, that's a question. You've got Russian arms coming across, allegations of Russian fighters on the ground, uh, etc. The Ukrainian government calls this a Russian invasion. Uh, the U.S. is not using that term. Why isn't it? Why isn't the West calling this an invasion and responding uh, appropriately? Well, I, I think it is an invasion, uh, and not only because this convoy wasn't uh, given permission by Ukraine to enter its, uh, its territory, but perhaps even more significantly, as the NATO uh, general recently uh, confirmed, Russia has moved artillery pieces into Ukraine and is firing on Ukrainian positions from within Ukraine. Uh, if that's not an evasion, I'm not sure what is. I think the reluctance to use that term is a reluctance to provoke Russia. But Russia really doesn't need much provocation these days. Uh, you know, I do think we may have dodged one bullet, though, Jim, and that is that probably the biggest fear were that these vehicles would be used by Russia to provoke Ukraine uh, into picking a fight which would justify then a, a full-scale military invasion by Russia. That didn't happen. I think Ukraine very sensibly didn't take the bait. Uh, Russia offered similar bait to Georgia some years ago, and Russia still occupies part of, parts of Georgia. So, so looking at this now, do you believe that the administration's policy, the U.S. administration's policy of gradually rapiding, ra ratcheting up the economic costs with each escalation on the part of Russia, do you th think that is effective deterring Putin? Uh, really, I think it's probably the only effective deterrent we have, and it's obviously not deterring everything uh, that we'd like to see Putin stop. But we don't have that many instruments uh, at, our, uh, at our behest here. Um, there have been calls for providing greater military support to Ukraine. We could do that, but if the Russians want to go in, nothing we provide the Ukrainians in terms of military support is going to stop them. I think the reason why Putin has slowed uh, his uh, move into Ukraine is because of the economic costs and the diplomatic costs. Uh, he, I think, is being forced by his own public opinion now, the, the monster that he created uh, into sending in these aid co convoys after promising to protect the Russian population anywhere in the world. Uh, but I think those sanctions have had a deterrent impact. And frankly, I'd like to see Europe and the United States go further now that we have these additional violations with the convoy and with these, uh, these artillery units firing from within Ukrainian territory on the Ukraine itself. Okay, the Congressman wants to see Europe and the U.S. move further. That's a question we'll be watching in the coming days and weeks. Thanks very much, as always, to Congressman Adam Schiff from California. He's on the House Intelligence Committee.